For every 100 women that have breast cancer, one man will also have breast cancer. The breast tissue in men and women is very similar until puberty, where there become changes due to hormones. These hormones, such as estrogen and testosterone, impact on the feminization or masculinization of the person, but they affect the secondary characteristics such as the breast. The primary tissue remains the same and therefore is subject to the same type of pathology changes. Anyone can get cancer, and since the incidence rises with age and cases affect adults in midlife or older years, but there has been a case of a five-year-old with breast cancer that has been documented. More than 77% of all diagnosed cancers occur in people age 58 and older, with the average for males being around 73. There is no difference in the mammographic imaging techniques for males or females. Only the volume of the tissue available to be imaged. The tissue itself is the exact same for techniques of mammography. The most common kinds of breast cancer in men are the same kinds as in women. The beginning of the cancer would be ductal carcinoma in situ, invasive lobular carcinoma, and invasive ductal carcinoma. It is rare for invasive lobular carcinoma to affect men. The reason for this is even after puberty, boys and men normally have low levels of female hormones and breast tissue doesn't grow much. Men's breast tissue has ducts, but only a few, if any, have lobules. At puberty, a girl's ovaries make female hormones causing breast ducts to grow and lobules to form at the ends of the ducts. These lobules are called terminal ductal lobulating units and it is the area that most breast cancers arise from in women. The five-year survival rate for men who have had breast cancer and it has been treated and caught on time is about 84%. The 10-year relative survival rate for men with breast cancer is 73%. Of course, survival rates are averages and vary depending on each man's diagnosis and treatment. These graphics show a difference in the amount of tissues and the growth of the breast in the male and the female. Due to the volume of tissue in the female breast, mammography is recommended as a screening process. On the other hand, because there is not as much tissue in the male breast, patients with suspicious findings on the examination warrant appropriate clinical management regardless of mammographic findings. Mammography in men may be of benefit only for image guidance of percutaneous biopsy of a suspicious mass. But remember, there's a lot more to pathology than just cancer. And one of the things that we find in men is gynecomastia. Gynecomastia is the growth of the male breast. One of the reasons we don't do as much mammography for breast cancer in men is that men have so little breast tissue, cancers do not need to grow very far before they involve the skin covering the breast or the muscles underneath the breast and they can rapidly metastasize because there's not as much tissue. Clinical symptoms and biopsy are usually utilized for evaluation of male breast cancer. It can be difficult to perform a mammogram on a person with little breast tissue. Screening mammograms are not routinely performed for people assigned male at birth who are of average risk for breast cancer. It is only men that are in the high risk category due to the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genetics or showing symptoms that usually get mammograms for breast cancer. Genetics and ethnicity do play a role in risk for having breast cancer in men. Unfortunately, we can't quantify the amount of risk, but we can demonstrate what has physically happened over the years. We can see that breast cancer doesn't just hit black women hardest, it's a problem for black men too. 
Only 2% of breast cancer cases in the United States are in men, but black men are disproportionately impacted by the disease compared to white men. Black men the ages from 18 to 64 were 76% more likely to die from breast cancer than white men, underscoring the differences in the impact of insurance and income on outcomes between white men and black men. Breast cancer is about 70 times less common among black men than black women. But as in black women, black men with breast cancer tend to have a worse prognosis. The American Cancer Society estimates for breast cancer in men in the United States for 2023 about 2,800 new cases of invasive breast cancer will be diagnosed and about 530 men will die from breast cancer. The incidence of male breast cancer in the United States varies by both race and ethnicity. Non-Hispanic black men have the highest breast cancer incidence rate overall. And Hispanic men have the lowest rate. Non-Hispanic black men have a higher breast cancer mortality rate than non-Hispanic white and Hispanic men. We can only speculate as to the reason for the differences in race and ethnicity in breast cancer. Here we see a graphic for the difference between male and female breast cancers for American Indian and Alaskan Natives, Asian Pacific Islanders, Blacks, Hispanics, and Whites. This graph has been adjusted by age for every 100,000 people. Due to the difference in the numbers, mammograms for men at risk of breast cancer are not routine as they are for women, but results of a published study in September 2019 showed that they can detect the disease early in those at high risk. Breast cancer is about 100 times less common among white men than among white women, and it is about 70 times less common among black men than black women. Those black and white men 65 and older had about the same risk of dying from breast cancer, and black men aged 18 to 64 had a 76% higher risk of dying from breast cancer than white men of the same age. It has been suggested that poverty may be an important factor in an important role in racial differences in male breast cancer outcomes. Conversely, White men and black men with breast cancer who had received similar treatment ended up with black men having worse outcomes. Black men have the highest incidence rates of breast cancer, 2.7 out of every 100,000 men, compared to 1.9 out of every 100,000 white men, and the lowest chance of recovery. Here we can see the mammogram of a man that has had an adenocarcinoma and had a mastectomy to remove the cancer. For men with breast cancer, the mastectomy is the number one type of treatment. Sometimes they have radiation therapy afterwards to make sure that all the cells have been killed or removed that are cancerous. Let's take a moment and review breast cancer signs or signs of breast cancer in men. Male breast cancer usually shows up as a lump under the nipple or in the axilla or the armpit. Misshapen breasts and non-matching breasts and nipple discharge are also possible signs of breast cancer in men. Clinically, it's much easier to find breast cancer in men, but mammograms may be of help for those in a high-risk category. Let's look at carcinogenesis, or cancer, by host and by agent. When we look at the agent or type of agent, we look at the length of application that the person has been subject to that agent, the site of the application, and the dose received and other co-carcinogenic fa factors may also be factored in. 
When we look at the host, what we're looking at is the patient or the species of patient, male, female, genetic disposition, age, and nutritional status. These impact on the cancerous growth. Most DNA mutations which result in breast cancer occur during life rather than having been inherited before birth. This means we have acquired this type of exposure from some source. It may be working around caustic chemicals or it may be working around radiation or it may even be involved in our diet. And of course, smoking and drinking are two big factors when related to cancer. Of course, the number one factor is age. A recent study showed that socioeconomic status makes a difference in breast cancer and people that work in metropolitan areas under high stress are five times more likely to have breast cancer than their counterparts who do not. This again is a subjective observation and cannot really be quantified with statistics. Although breast cancer in men is rare, it has been reported in a five-year-old boy. It is very rare before the age of 35, with the average age being about 73 for those that do get breast cancer. The amount of radiation therapy has changed over the years and the survival rate has gotten very good for children. We used to lose 80%. Today that has reversed. We only lose about 20% and save 80%. But those children that have been exposed to radiation therapy for head and neck have had a higher incidence of breast cancer later on in life. Another factor for a male breast cancer may be testicular disorders. Several male breast cancer patients have a history of testicular infection, testicular injury, or undescended testes. The breast cancer risk for men is increased if other members of their family, both male and female, who are blood relatives, have had breast cancer. About 20% of men with breast cancer have a close male or female relative with the disease. For this reason, all men diagnosed with breast cancer should have genetic testing done so we can get better statistics about the inheritance and the BRCA1 and BRC2 genes that they have. BRCA1 and BRCA2 are inherited gene mutations for breast cancer. Kleinfelter's syndrome, a genetic condition in which a male is born with an extra copy of the X chromosome. Kleinfelter's syndrome, syndrome isn't inherited, but rather occurs only as a result of a random genetic error after conception. Some of the symptoms of those born with Kleinfelter's are longer legs, wider hips, extra large breasts, less musculature, small testicles, and less hair on the body. As we're all aware, the liver plays an important role in sex hormone metabolism by producing bonding proteins which carry the hormone in the blood. Men with liver disease, such as cirrhosis, have relatively low levels of androgen and estrogen within their bloodstream. These are hormones that have a direct impact on the breast. In fact, estrogen is often used for treatment of prostate or prostate cancer and at the same time it increases the risk for breast cancer because estrogen is a cell growth stimulator. Differences in clinical characteristics such as the type and stage of breast tumors, age at diagnosis, and cancer treatment between men and women with breast cancer plays a major role accounting for 62% of the mortality disparity documented by researchers. Let's take a minute to look at this table of male breast cancer staging and survival rates. Basically, we're looking at about four different stages of cancer. 
stage one being the earliest and of course stage four being the latest. Survival rate in five years depends upon what stage your cancer was found. Survival rates are also impacted by the type of treatment and the response to the treatment the patient receives. Let's review the earlier statement that symptoms of male breast cancer include nipple discharge, nipple pain, and changes in the look or feel of the skin of the breast or a lump in the breast or under the axilla area. If we have inflammatory breast cancer, we can notice that there might be a redness to the breast or an orange peel look or peel de orange appearance to the breast. And what we're looking at is as the tumors hook on to the Cooper's ligaments and start pulling, we can get some dimpling or puckering of the skin around the nipple. Now we'll look at some male specific risk factors for breast cancer development. One is higher age, higher socioeconomic uh, status, nobody knows why, relatives of breast cancer that are women. Well, just like in the risk with women, uh, you know, you have close relatives. Jewish ancestry, slightly higher risk for men. Exposure to ionizing radiation, like many cancers. Exposure to female hormones, it makes the breasts grow. And reduced testicular function because of decreased testosterone. Here are some more. One is a higher body weight in early life because you have more breast tissue. Gynecomastia and large breasts. Some drugs will elevate your prolactin, so have to worry about that. And if you have prolactoma, what you're looking at is a tumor of the pituitary. As you know, the pituitary is the master gland that controls all of our hormones, which then would lead to head trauma being a factor, which is very, very rare. Hyperprolactemia, which is a disease of the pituitary gland. Then, of course, Klinefelter syndrome, which we've already gone over. Mumps, which spread to the testicles. Fixing a hernia, which damages the testicles, inguinal herniography. Or undescended testicles, because they don't make much testosterone as well. The most common symptom of breast cancer in men is a lump or a mass in the breast. Often this turns out to be gynecomastia or simply a concentration of male breast tissue that can be felt. It is fine to get a mammogram if you have any of these symptoms to make you sure that you do not have breast cancer. We just don't do mammogram screening routinely on men. After initial diagnosis of breast cancer, Male patients will have a 19% higher chance of dying than female patients within the five years of the diagnosis. Breast cancer can be in situ, which means it's contained within the uh, cell, are contained within the duct, or once it breaks out, it can metastasize. After breaking through the duct, the cancer cells spread primarily through the lymphatic system, but also the bloodstream. And they can also spread through local growth, destroying tissue as they grow. Here we see a mammogram of a 60-year-old male. It presents with a palpable mass. It is a 1.7 centimeter irregular high-density mass with a few calcifications in the subareolar area. Microcalcifications are one of the first clues that radiologists look for, and they look at the quality and the shape of the calcifications to indicate whether or not they are benign or malignant. We also observe the mammograms to see if we can find systemic disorders, such as gynecomastia, which has been noted in patients with cirrhosis or patients in chronic liver failure who are undergoing long-term hemodialysis and patients with chronic pulmonary conditions, such as emphysema or tuberculosis. The condition has also been seen in cases of malnutrition. In addition, this condition has also been seen in bodybuilders who use anabolic steroids. 
Here we see the condition in an anabolic steroid user who is a weightlifter. You can see the breast tissues clearly. Gynecomastia is actually the most common male breast disorder. It is not a tumor, but rather an increase in the amount of a man's breast tissue. Usually men have too little breast tissue to be felt or even noticed. Gynecomastia can appear as a button-like or disc-like growth under the nipple and areola, which can be sometimes felt and seen. Some men have more severe gynecomastia and they appear to have small breasts. Here we see a patient with gynecomastia and follow-up mammograms over the years. Several non-hormonal drugs are known to cause gynecomastia, including digitalis, cimetidine, respirin, azinazad, and tricyclic antidepressants. This CC and MLO view show the flame-shaped appearance of a retroareolar breast tissue in a male which is consistent with gynecomastia. So what causes cancer? Cancer is caused by alterations or mutations in the genetic code of the DNA and can be induced in somatic cells by carcinogenic chemicals, radiation exposure, some viruses, and heredity. So let's begin by just watching a tumor cell grow. You get multiple mutations and the cell gets larger. The cell will then breaks through the epidermal layer and goes into the bloodstream or the lymphatic system. The body's own systems may destroy the cancerous cells or they can metastasize, moving to different tissues in the body and seeding themselves to be activated at a later date. The characteristics of these cancer cells is they grow unregulated and unrestricted. The cancer cell growth is invasive and the cancer cells invade neighboring structures, the tissues, and organs and often destroy their function. The cancer cells can metastasize or spread throughout the body and the growth rate is dependent upon being faster or slower by a number of factors. As we discussed earlier, breast adenocarcinomas start in the ducts, usually the terminal lobulating ductal unit which creates the milk in the breast. These are apocrine glands. Apocrine glands change or degrade to cause milk to be produced and then regrow. A disruption of this process can cause cancer. Cancer depends upon blood to grow and there is a process called angiogenesis wherein the cancer tumor itself forms its own blood supply. As we discuss, cancer infiltrates locally and metastasizes via the lymphatic system and blood circulation. Different cancers have different paths, but with breast cancer, it usually goes bone, brain, liver, and lung. So the cancer cells break off from the primary tumor and travel to distant sites and invade the organs. Cancer cells are rapidly dividing and multiplying cells. With a tumor, if we're under 50 years of age, it will double in size approximately every 80 days. Once we reach 50 to the age of 70, it takes about 157 days to double in size. And as we're older, over the age of 70, it'll take almost 200 or 188 days to double in size. So the growth of cancer has a lot to do with age. Faster growth in the tumor occurs when you are younger. 40 to 45 percent of male patients who seek the care of a physician have swelling under their arm which suggests spreading of the breast cancer to the axilla or the lymph nodes within the axilla which is why the diagnosis of the mass and or lymph nodes under the arm is extremely important. Often when we hear the word tumor we think of cancer but realistically tumor just means an abnormal growth of cells. And that abnormal growth can be either benign or malignant. Benign means that the tumor is local and cannot spread or invade to other areas. When it becomes malignant, it spreads or invades, called metastasizing. Malignant cancer cells metastasize and spread to the body. 
Like all cells of the body, a man's breast duct cells can undergo cancerous changes as well. The symptoms of male breast cancer usually are a painless lump, and it is usually discovered by the patient himself and is by far the most common first symptom of male breast cancer. Typically, the lump appears beneath the areola where the breast tissue is concentrated. One of the most aggressive types of breast cancer for men and women is inflammatory breast cancer. Inflammatory breast cancer is an aggressive but rare type of breast cancer. It makes the breast swollen, red, warm, and tender to the touch rather than forming a lump. It can be mistaken for an infection in the breast and is very rare in men. Most commonly, men present with a painless subareolar mass. Male breast cancer is also reported to present at a relatively advanced stage compared with female breast cancers. Almost all breast cancers in men, like most breast cancers in women, are carcinomas. Invasive ductal carcinoma constitutes 84 to 93 percent of the cases of male breast cancer, which is a bit higher than that it is in women. What is the difference between in situ and invasive cancer? In situ cancer means it's contained within either the lobes or the ducts, and it's not going to invade at this point in time. Invasive cancer is when it breaks through the lobes or the ducts and invades the body through the lymphatic system or the bloodstream. The treatment of male breast cancer is generally like the treatment of female breast cancer. The basic therapy for primary cancer that shows no signs of a distant spread is surgery. In its advanced disease, it is combined with radiotherapy and chemotherapy. If it is localized and remove all the cancerous cells, you have quote-unquote cured the cancer. Surgery is often followed up with radiation therapy just to make sure that there are no stray cells that were left behind. Here are a list of some of the treatments that are used for male breast cancer. Surgery, lymph node surgery for male breast cancer, radiation therapy, hormonal therapy, chemotherapy, and targeted therapy for male breast cancer. The mastectomy, or surgical remover of the male breast, is the standard treatment for about 80% of all cases. It is a radical mastectomy. Here we see a graphic of how small the tissue is in the male breast, and we see a tumor that is located in the breast and how it communicates with the lymph nodes. We sample the lymph nodes to make sure that the tumor cells have not gone into the lymphatic system, and the good thing about the lymphatic system is that tumor cells cannot jump lymph nodes. They go from one to the other. So if there is no presence of cancerous tissue in the lymph nodes, the excision of the tumor has basically cured the cancer. With the caveat that none of it has also gotten into the bloodstream. Just as in females, we can do breast sparing surgery, such as a lumpectomy or a partial mastectomy. Men being treated with post-operative adjutant radiation therapy for breast cancer is a method of trying to make sure that we destroy any remaining cells or cells that may have been seeded during the surgery. A recent review showed that limited surgery such as a lumpectomy or partial mastectomy coupled with post-operative irradiation affords good disease control. Statistics show that 4 to 17 percent of male patients with breast cancer have distant spread at the time they first see a physician about their problem. Furthermore, 18 to 54 percent of males with breast cancer treated for local disease will experience a spread to distant sites at some time in the future. If there is a reoccurrence, it usually appears within two years of the initial treatment. Locally in advanced disease or isolated metastasis, can be treated in men as they are in women by either surgery and radiotherapy or, if extensive, might use chemotherapy and hormonal uh, manipulation to control the disease.
decision to use adjuvant chemotherapy to treat men with breast cancer must be made on an individual basis. The disadvantage of the giving toxic drugs, especially to older patients, must be weighed against the rate of occurrence or reoccurrence in men. Since endocrine therapy benefits so many men, chemotherapy is likely to play a secondary role in advanced male breast cancer treatment. Targeted cancer therapies are treatments that target specific characteristics of the cancer cell to kill the cancer cell, such as a protein that allows the cancer cell to grow in a rapid and abnormal way is stopped. Targeted therapy generally less likely than chemotherapy to harm normal and healthy cells. Unfortunately, socially, and it is getting better, men are reluctant to have any type of social or psychiatric treatment after having breast cancer. They have very little support groups out there for them. At one time, men were not even allowed to walk in the Susan G. Coleman parades for breast cancer. Thank you for watching and I hope this has been beneficial and we'll see you soon. This is Mark Struthers.